Tilder! Should you start filming exclusively in Hyper Log Gamma on your GH5? Well, when you're able to take an image that looks like this and bring it back down to this? Absolutely. Done. Roll that intro. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers come first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So as of recent, one of the viewers here on this channel that goes by Go Polaris Studios, shout out to you, he asked me if I had seen a clip where someone was shooting an impromptu test, if you will, with the GH5's HLG, the Hyper Log Gamma, and how much highlight he was able to recover. Now, when I looked at that video, it was insane because in the beginning, it's obviously everything's blown out. And then when he showed what he was able to recover from it, it was quite awesome. Now I'll leave that video link down below, but the one thing he didn't show was waveforms and all these other technical stuff of like how many stops was he over. So me being a kind of a nerd, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna run my own set of tests to see what is going on when you're shooting at the HLG color profile. So in these tests, what I did was I wanted to keep everything as consistent as possible so that the camera or the lens does not color anything differently. So all of it's gonna be done at ISO 400, consistent. The white balance was taken at the natural color profile and that's gonna stay consistent all the way through the tests. The aperture is also going to stay consistent because I don't want the lens to color or change any perception. So that's gonna stay at a solid 2.8. And then lastly, because HLG is a 422 10-bit codec, I'm going to take all the other uh, color profiles and shoot it at the 422 10-bit codec to keep all that consistent. The only thing that's not consistent is I'm using the shutter to adjust the exposure. And the reason I'm not using a variable ND is because again, I don't want to introduce some other element that changes as I move through the variable ND and therefore could change the image up slightly. Using the shutter is the best way for me to adjust exposure without changing anything else. All right, so without further ado, let's go to the first test. So the first test is something that no one is ever going to actually put themselves through, but basically I have a white piece of paper with text. The reason I wanna use a white piece of paper is because it's already white, so if you expose it in just the right way, it's gonna hit IRE 100 very quickly. But for this set of tests, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to overexpose and I'm gonna pull everything back down where the white is actually IRE 50. So that is my reference point, as you can see here, that I shot for two other color profiles. So this is what I'm trying to get at. Now, as we get up to IRE 100 and we start pulling down, you can already see that the HLG seems to be doing a lot better. In fact, you can actually see the texture of the paper that is still there. And again, everything is at the exact same settings. So all the other profiles, including the 8-bit codec, are already starting to lose its potential detail. As we get into plus one, again, the HLG seems to be doing the best while the other ones are starting to notice noticeably degrade. And then as we get to plus two, same old story, HLG is now starting to break quite a bit, but you can still see that they do have some sort of dark detail that's retained. And as we get to plus three and plus four and the plus five, <laughs> uh, yeah, th at this point, a lot of them have started dropping out, but the HLG seems to be still around for the long haul. Now, test number two is where it gets interesting, and I'm gonna preface real quick. I know I personally am out of focus because I was actually focusing on the color chart instead, and I kind of just stood there on the other side just to have some sort of reference. But this is the test that really, really got me wondering. So, what I did in this test was after I did all the exposures for all the different color profiles and all different sorts of overexposing stops, I would key in on that color chart, especially on the skin tone side. And that was what I used to rebalance every picture to try to get it as close to the reference as possible. So here we go. Here is the reference of my face, and yes, I know it's out of focus, so I'm sorry about that, but you can at least kind of see how each color profile fares with the same white balance and basically the same IRE levels for my skin, which is at around the 40 to 50 range. Now, once we get to the high breaking point where the skin tone is starting to go towards 90 and 100, you can already start seeing that even here, all the other color profiles are starting to lose texture, and you can definitely see it in my forehead as you get from 
the darkest side to the brightest side. You'll notice that the brightest side no longer ha it looks too smooth and you can't really see the blemish on my cheek um, unless you're looking at the HLG where it does seem to hold that detail. As we get to plus one over the breaking point, you can basically start seeing all the other color uh, profiles minus the HLG is pretty much already out of the race. They're already starting to show some major problems in the skin, and but the HLG still seems to be good. At plus two, plus two, we're still doing quite well with the HLG, while the rest of them are again completely gone and no longer usable. Now plus three is finally where the HLG breaks and then so on and so forth. You really don't need to see the rest of the test, but here they are anyways. So here is where it gets interesting. I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side comparison of what it looked like before I pulled it back down to the reference levels. So as you can see here, as we go from the reference to the breaking point baseline, you know, we can already start seeing that how each color profile looks different um, in terms of how it looks at the blown out areas. But here's, again, here's where it gets really interesting. You get to plus one and holy cow, the HLG definitely looks like it's technically blown out, but here's all the details that's there. Going to plus two, again, the HLG is blown out. Everything else is blown out on the other color profiles, but yet that is what you see when you bring everything back down. And then so on and so forth. As you go to even more overexposure at this point, you're gonna lose everything. So some interesting things that I discovered while doing these tests is how the camera interprets the waveform differently when you're shooting in HLG. So with all the exact same settings, basically the natural, Cassini D, and all those regular color profiles, I was exposing my skin tones to be somewhere in the waveform of IRE50, and that's what I looked at in the GH5. Now, the moment I changed into HLG color space, everything shifted down, and my skin tones ended up being somewhere around IRE25 or so. Now, here's what's interesting. When I brought the video file into Final Cut Pro X or Final Cut Pro 10, however you wanna call it, and basically what happened happens is, is if I'm looking at the footage in the browser and it's not in my timeline yet, the waveform does reflect what the GH5 did in terms of my skin tones being dropped down towards the 25 area. But when I put it into a Rec 709 timeline, then it jumps back to IRE50, which is pretty much where all the other color codecs are. That was definitely very interesting to me. And the only way I can possibly explain this is Panasonic during one of the conferences had said that the HLG was meant to look gorgeous straight out of the camera and it has a little flag marker on it. So if you're looking at if you're looking at the video file through a Rec 709 TV, just an HD TV, it's going to go, "Oh, uh, this is not a high dynamic range TV, so I'm gonna show everything down condensed into a Rec 709 space. But if it's an HDR TV, it's gonna know that and then it's going to give you the full color gamut. So that's something that they have said and I'm wondering if this is kind of how it's working as well within Final Cut Pro. So what's the bottom line here? The bottom line is HLG has me very intrigued, especially when you're shooting in the Rec 2020 space and forcing it into a Rec 709 space, because it seems to give you the perception that you're gonna get two stops of overexposure safety to bring back down into the Rec 709 space and be able to see everything. Now, I don't know the technicalities of what's actually going on. The most basic way I can try to explain this to you is this. If this container right here is Rec 709 and this container here is Rec 2020, this extra top space right here, that's where all the extra color depth and the way it's able to reproduce colors, reproduce luma values, blah, 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 for that high dynamic range um, to look. So when you force it back down into a Rec 709, that explains why you're able to see all these other values up here, whereas the other codex could not. So in that terms, this is where it gets interesting for you and me, because now I'm starting to think if HLG might be the best way to go. But I can't say that right now, because with all these tests that took me a while to do, um, this changes my perception of how I'm supposed to actually light a scene 
with HLG. Because again, the waveform monitor in the GH5 is gonna show you a completely different value than the natural profile and the CineD file. It's going to actually shift everything down. So now my perception of, oh, I need to keep the skin tones at 50. But that does not seem to be the case because if you do that, then a lot, then you're basically losing that one extra stop that you could in the highlights. That's what I need to start working on for the next video to kind of give you guys a much better guideline of how you should expose HLG. But right now, based on these tests, HLG seems to be a very awesome solution for these kind of crazy situations where you might be competing against something that's really, really bright. Because if it's overexposed, it looks like you can bring it back down. And hey, that's it for this week, everybody. If this video has been the final influence for you to finally get a GH5 or GH5S, I would really appreciate it if you check on my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you. It just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. Until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you guys in the next one.